Exactly. Now we're live. What is up, world? I literally just said that a second ago, and then a second ago, welcome to video as well as live. Um, it's been a minute. It's been more than a minute. It, it's how long it's been. It's been so long that I have a different configuration set up. You have a different background. I have a different background. I have a different chair. And like, a, that's how long it's been since our yeah, last video. And I'm not sure if I have everything set up right or not. So, uh, two seconds to do some homework here. Is it working on yours? I don't know, but I'm going to talk to you guys while he looks at the technology, and then I'll look at the technology. Hopefully, you guys have had a fantastic summer so far. Um, Connor and I were having our back porch conversations with the birds of chirping and coffee in hand, and we are like... You know what? We think that we're going to start the Facebook Lives back again for the fall. Um, a couple things. One, to serve you guys, right? So uh, a lot has changed in the SEO world. And then again, a lot has never changed in the SEO world. The structure and the foundation is exactly the same. Um, however, it, it's kind of cool watching some of the new updates happen. Hey, Bruce. Hey, Bruce. Um, you can hear it, us okay, it's, right? It's kind of cool watching some of the updates happen and, and happening. Um, where the search engines are actually helping those business owners get connected more to those that are looking for their services or products, right? And that's what today's episode is about. Got uh, Google or Connor wanted to dive into um, the Google update uh, for helpful content, um, and then yep. so we're going to attempt to try to keep this under fourteen minutes <laughs> because time is valuable, right? But we could talk for ages, like ages, ages. Well, like he had me talking pre-video and I had a whole conversation with myself. So I have no problem talking. Yeah, uh, you can keep going and, and I'll just sit here and just nod. Look and handsome and look pretty. I'll like, oh. Okay, cool. <laughs> anyway. Connor, let's go ahead and have you dive in. All right. So um, and I don't believe that I've posted it onto the chat yet. Uh, so we'll go ahead and just post that in here. and Y'all, this is that. the part that drives me crazy about the live. It's all his technical. I have the step and then the step and then the step. Honey, talk, talk to the camera. Talk to the camera. Got it. Um, okay. Hi, camera. Uh, all right. So the big thing is that at the end of, or the middle of August, Google announced that there was going to be an update called the Helpful Content Update. And for me, in my brain, I always interpreted that to be the Useful Content Update. And I think those two words are interchangeable between the useful and helpful. Um, but basically, it started rolling out the end of August and early September. It is now done rolling out, um, and now we want to know what the effects of it all are. Uh, so to work our way backwards, the effects are it hasn't affected a ton of people uh, in terms of individuals' websites. It has affected some of the big violators. Uh, so. Uh, let's dig into exactly what was going on, why this update was important, and, and what it's actually all about. And, and really, the, the title itself, you know, the helpful content update, that's really what it is. If your content on your website is not helpful to a user, then Google no longer wants to show it. Uh, that's the long and the short of it. Um, you know, one of the examples that they gave, and we run into it on a regular basis, We'll be watching a TV show like Blue Bloods, for example. Yeah, one of my favorite shows. Yeah, we like Blue Bloods. So we'll be watching season 12. We know that's the current season. And then it's, okay, so when does season 13 Oh, I, I don't ever look that, not to interrupt, I don't ever look that stuff up until I'm at the last episode. Right. Because no. I don't know if it's going to come back or not come back. Anyway, <laughs> sidetrack. So at the end of it, we're looking up when does it come out. And we'll find all these articles that you'll click on. Uh, when is season two being, or season 13 being produced? Mm -hmm. or when is it being released? And all that stuff. Well, at the end of the article, or buried somewhere in the article, it says that no release date has been finalized or it hasn't even started production. So one of the things from Google was that if the question is unanswerable, it really shouldn't be in the index. You know, it's not there. Or you should, at the very beginning of the article, say, no release date has been done, and then give the history of the, the show and who's mm -hmm. involved and what characters and so forth. But get to the point. And I have a hard time just even in conversation, you know, both on video and phone calls, Bruce can attest to this. I, I, I'll i have a hard time getting to where my point is. <laughs> it takes a little longer than normal. Um, but that's kind of the deal with the articles is that 
we need to get the answers fairly soon. If you're looking for when is the next full moon and you type that into Google, Google might even provide the answer. The next full moon is on this date. Or when you click on the link uh, that's provided, the first thing the answer is, here's the next full moon. Oh, and here's the next ones after that in case you miss it. And by the way, you might be interested in eclipses. So here's when the next eclipse is going to be. So if, if I get this right, um, this is actually the update that a lot of people have been wanting and craving for a long, long time. Is that the case? Yes. To yes. In the grand scheme of things, it is going to hammer spam websites. So whenever we say that, it's spam websites. So people that are just putting stuff out there, like there's um, the artificial writers, right? It's the software that creates content that just creates it to fill a page, right? Mm -hmm. It's kind of that, as well as duplicate content. That was something that we were talking about, is the websites that go and scrape the content of somebody else, and then they continue to scrape content for somebody else in different areas and pages, whether it's for products or actual pages services. Um, they can also get dinged on this update as well. Ding dong. Ding dong. <laughs> ding. They can get dinged on this dong on this update. So yeah, uh, the duplicate content. I mean, that's always been an issue. It has been for the last twenty years. Uh, that if you're copying and pasting from somebody else's website, yeah. Um, why does Google need to show your website at all? Yeah. Um, and this is true with with the big articles. It's true with um, newspapers. You know, it, it, that's like a, a regurgitation process that's insane. Mm -hmm. AP will put out uh, um, an, an update about something. Every news company that's out there then just republishes the same thing. Now, is it helpful to their users? Yes, because people who are reading the Desert Sun may not be reading the Washington Post or may not be reading Chicago Times. They're reading a Southern California uh, newspaper. Mm -hmm. So is it helpful to those readers? Yes. Does that mean that article should be indexed by Google and put out on the web and have, you know, basically 14,000 articles all say the same thing? No, it doesn't. So a user would go to the Desert Sun's website. They would read the article there. No problem. But Google doesn't need to index that. Um, so I, I think from a, 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 big, a big picture end of things, um, a lot of the spam, a lot of the duplication, a lot of the fluff pieces, uh, those are kind of going to get de-indexed. Now, how Google is determining that, some of it is AI, um, you know, machine learning. That's going yeah, to I don't think they have enough people to no. <laughs> be in that whole situation. But it's, the whole thing about the, the content update is all, they say, is all machine learning. And yeah. that's great. Um, but how they're determining that it was an interesting discussion that uh, Clint Boyer and uh, Ted, I can't remember Ted's last name, uh, but they had an interesting discussion about it. Um, you know, do you just go through and say, oh, well, this article hasn't really see received much traffic, therefore it must be spam. I mean, that's a bad way of doing it because you'll get scientific papers out there that really don't get a lot of traffic. Yeah. But if your website has 40,000 pages and you get 20 visitors in a month, that's probably a spam website. Mm -hmm. It's turn and burn, spun content, AI content, all that kind of fun stuff. So all those things are all playing into, uh, into that removal. Now, as I said in the beginning, there's not really a lot of many people reporting that they got hit. But at the same time, mm -hmm. what SEO is going to come on there and say, Oh yeah, I did things bad for the last ten years, and my there, website was there killed. was a there was a uh, correct me if I was wrong, but there was a handful of companies that reached out to ask about our services, and you had plugged them in the software to have the pre sales conversation, mm -hmm. and we wound up finding that they just weren't aligned. They weren't aligned with what uh, we could accomplish. We couldn't get to their goal, right? It was they wanted to do black hat SEO. Long story short, we only do white hat SEO, right? Um, but there's ways for Connor to kind of creepy crawl and uh, spy in a kind, nice way, spy, uh, not stalk, just spy a little bit, right? Um, and, it's only a little creeper. <laughs> and you were able to see like where they actually, their uh, ratings, their rankings actually went down. Um, and it was based on the fact that there was duplicate content, right? There was uh, spun content. And, and by spun content, guys, like 
you can find an article and in your own language, in your own way, find a way to rewrite it or a product in a product description, find a way to rewrite it to yourself, right? Mm -hmm. um, you can tell if it's a human or not a human. You could also tell if their first language is English or not or Spanish or not, right? Like there's, there's certain dialects that come through in writing um, as well as personality that comes through in writing. Uh, so you just want to make sure that you're not just kind of using, like we use some software to help us start content, right? Mm -hmm. Or to add a little bit of content or, oh, maybe we forgot about this, right? Um, but by no means do we rely heavily on that software for an entire article or an entire product description, right? Yeah. Yeah. It looks I mean, like we have some. Yeah. Bruce asked, you yeah. know, how does this affect the products and descriptions? I mean, and you kind of touched on that. Yeah. Um, it, it is going to play a factor. Uh, you know, so if you figure, you know, Nike releases a pair of shoes and this is the description inside of their, uh, their database mm -hmm. and all the different places, Amazon and so forth, they all import that same product and that same description. Why would Google show, you know, Joe's website? Because all these other places all have the same, um, the same breakdown, like right. the same information. So taking that description and rewriting it in your own words, that's a big part. It, it, you know, there was a, a, another SEO I was listening to and he said, you know, if it takes too much time, then it's probably worth doing. You know, if it takes a long time to do something, it's probably worth doing. There's also another uh, quote that I came across this week that I actually kind of liked and I'm gonna take it to a totally different part. It said, right to the point that it scares you. And I think that sometimes when people are like, oh, I have to create 1600 words, of valuable content, it kind of scares them because they're like, what am I going to write about? How am I going to write about it? Right. Mm -hmm. um, but if you, you take your step back in your business, you're already having sales conversations. You're already answering questions, customized questions, questions that asked all the time. Right. Um, there's processes, there's ways that you do things differently. There's behind the scenes, there's um, you learning your own education, right? Like people are always curious when it comes, especially small businesses or mom and pop shops or husband and wife teams. They're always curious about what happens, what's going on in the background. How does it all work? Um, it could be because they're looking for inspiration to maybe accomplish something similar to what you have, but maybe they're also in a totally different industry, right? right? Um, so there, there's good launching places to start off of, but I love the quote of right write what's right write what scares you right right to the point where you're scared yeah um and, I, and not necessarily scared like i have a fear of <laughs> monsters in the closet right uh more scared of uh it's outside your boundary yeah but in, inside the thing it, it talks about or inside the the guidelines from google and i have a link to that from inside the article there's a link inside of there yeah you actually um, wrote an article before we did the live to yep. try and help people in case they wanted to do a side-by-side -side guide yep mm -hmm. so inside of there it talks about the the length of an article you know okay. how how long an article should be and from google's end there is no minimum word count now we have our own internal one yep. we've used it for years 450 words you always have on minimum. the page mm -hmm. because it, it takes two minutes to explain something Yep. You know, so two minutes is about 450 and also, three minutes, like, maybe. The first paragraph or a couple sentences is going to be an intro. Mm -hmm. Then you're going to want to do a closing. Like a lot of people don't do a closing and ask for the sale or what's the next step. They just, and what happens is the users freeze. They don't know. I know guys, it sounds so simple. People should know at the end of an article, go and shop and buy, mm -hmm. but you've pretty much put them into a different world realm universe of whatever you've been talking about. Right. You're, it's almost kind of like, you're like, Hey, smell the cookies. I'm making chocolate chip cookies. Smell them. Come into the house, have a seat. And then you just, Never hand them the cookie, yep. right? And basically, along with all of that, you know, if you go to the store looking for clothes or whatnot, and the person who's helping you comes up and says, can I help you find anything? Oh, I'm looking for these jeans. Great. They're over there. Yep. Awesome. Now, go away yeah. and let me shop. Hey, Doris. You, thanks you for joining us. don't them right beside you. Yeah. Uh, it, talking to you for the next five minutes. You've already got your answer. Now, move along and go to the place. Absolutely. And that's the thing with the website. Right. So... Uh, the helpfulness is the key part. Is it, are you answering the person's question fully? Obviously in 15 minutes, we did not answer this question fully. But, <laughs> well, I'm going to say there is like a little guideline of bullet points that you provided. So do you want to share some of these bullet points for people? Sure. Like, Cause you actually broke it down pretty clean and clear. Yeah. So like the main things from my interpretation, that, that's one of the guidelines from Google is don't just respin the content. Don't regurgitate what everybody else says. 
you know, have your own influence in it, have your own yeah. experience out of it. So the big things that I took away from their, their paper on stuff, uh, write to your audience. So you're writing for people, not search engines. That's a big one. Um, yeah, that, that's a huge one. I mean, the others is don't mix your, your content. If your website is all about garage doors, then don't suddenly start writing about camera equipment. You know, and, and we fall prey to that in our own website. We can get squirrely on content. It's we have web to design keep it very, SEO. Very, yeah, we have to keep it very, very in. We have to stay in our lane stay when we're right. writing the content. Yep. And then we were talking about it yesterday. What happens is we write an article or we come up with a video idea, and then it splits off to twenty other ideas. So we have to like come all the way back down. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> there's an article years ago, Flappy Bird. Flappy yeah. Bird was a video game, and uh, we were writing all about this Flappy Bird thing. It has nothing to do with what we were doing. It was so, one of the most popular articles until Flappy was. Bird went away. Yeah. So the other stuff on here, uh, don't just summarize again. Use your own. Um, it, it, your with own useful, spin. helpful content, if you can create a list, a uh, a checklist, a troubleshooting list, pros and cons, pros and cons, how to keep something clean, steps one through ten, um, that type of thing, that will automatically fall into the bucket of helpful, useful content, mm -hmm. right? So, like that is an option. And if you have real world experience with that particular object or with that particular service, then showcase it. Yep. You know. Uh, you can go onto websites about vitamins and, and health diets and stuff like that. And the people who are writing, it's just affiliates Yep. and they don't really do the work. One so. other area that was a guideline that you put in here was to make sure that you answered the question. So uh, you can actually get in a little bit of trouble um, and your balance rate will go through the roof. If you have an intro, if you're talking about a subject and then you wind up talking about something completely different or you actually don't give the answer completely or mm -hmm. a summary of the answer, right? Um, and that can actually cause the pogo stick and or uh, Google might actually find out and be like, look, you're uh, clickbaiting or whatever the thing is yep. where you're getting somebody in for one thing. Uh, what's the thing? It's not clickbait. It is clickbait. Called... Okay, cool. Yep. Very good. I'm a lot smarter than I thought, y'all. <laughs> Isn't that so, fun? The beginning of my list said, you know, write for your specific audience, people, not search engines. And the last thing on my list is write articles for your intended audience or existing audience. And again, that's just driving the point home from my end that it has to be for the people by the people. Yeah. So, so I was going to say the first one where you said write for the uh, people, I get that. That just means human, write for humans. Don't write for software. Don't mm -hmm. write for the search engine. Right. I totally get that. The last one about intended audience. I think this is really important for people to figure out. Who is your ideal target market? Write content for them. Don't write content for Joe Bob or whatever. If you if you have an idea of content and you're like, oh, I should probably write about that, but maybe one person is asked about it and they're not really your target market, you might not want to do it. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of what I took away from that last bullet point. Yep. And it, that's kind of the, the nuts and bolts of everything. Be yep. helpful in your content. As long as you're, you're providing useful content or helpful content, Google's going to love you rewrite your descriptions, rewrite content, and it might be a good time to do an audit, a content audit on yep. your website. Find out if the articles that you wrote years ago, and we're guilty. We're, y'all, we're <laughs> going through an overhaul on our own stuff. We're looking at all of our old content because we have tons of articles, right? And they rank great. Some of them get traffic, some of them don't. Some yep. of them don't even make sense anymore. Like yep. I had to go and I, we were trying to help provide useful content by giving people information about social media. And then we kept getting contacted for social media services. And we're like, yeah, we don't do that. Like, ask me about TikTok. Yeah. And I'm like, I have no idea, right? And it's uh, almost in, in that situation, yeah. it's better for us just to delete the yeah, article. Yeah, so we just deleted and not it. not talk about social and media. Out. And so. we redirected it to our blog. So that's the other thing is if you have content that you found is not that useful, that's maybe duplicate from somewhere else, maybe you copied and pasted it from somewhere, um, go ahead and deactivate that or unpublish publish that article and then make sure you do appropriate redirect. So that way it drops back into your blog page. So that's a step that needs to be taken care of. Yep. I think, I mean, from my end, I think that kind of summarizes everything. Do you have anything further you want to put on here? No, I just had a cool coffee mug and I wanted to show y'all. I don't know if it's going to show up backwards. It says, I came, I, oh wait, wait, it says, <laughs> I came, I saw, I made it awkward. It's very hard to see in the fancy camera. If it helps, it's yes. not backwards. Yes. Oh, it's not, it's not it backwards. wasn't? Oh, no. see, see, Facebook and their events, like, I can't see the live video. Like, it's driving me crazy. I can't invite people. Like, it's really, like, it's an interesting experience. So I don't know if we'll do an actual event next time or just go live. I don't know. <laughs>
All right. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next time. All right. Chat guys. soon. Thanks Bye -bye. for joining us. Have a great day now. Thank you.